Hello and welcome to our Gold Lactation on Light Conference for 2014. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC and Public Relations Coordinator for Gold Conferences. I'm here today with Lisa Marasco and we're just having a little conversation about her up and coming uh, presentation at our conference and it is titled Get a Better Grip on Prolactin. Welcome Lisa, thanks for sitting down with me today. Thank you so much for having me. So let me ask you, um, why, did you why do you think that there is little known about prolactin? Well, you would think that we would know a lot more because of the dairy industry, but when it comes to translating that research to humans, um, there just hasn't been enough done. And um, it's really the advent of our knowledge has just really been probably in the last 10, 20 years and we really started to get a grip, so to speak, on prolactin. Um, but we kind of know it's, it has, it, it's important in the beginning. You hear terms like it's permissive for milk production, but the information's all over the map in terms of it's, you know, how much do you need? Nobody knows for sure. And so um, we, we just don't have enough human research yet. And so, and we're just still at that place where we're having to glean from the animal literature. Right. Well, hopefully that the tables will turn soon. And uh, you know, I know there's many of us that would like to see some, um, you know, research uh, in that area. So, can you tell me? Do you do you feel that prolactin is somewhat dismissed then when we're looking at women who are struggling with their production of milk? I, I don't just feel that. I absolutely know that as a clinician when I am dealing with mysterious situations um, and we nothing else is adding up and I'm asking myself, are we sure that this is normal? Um, and I start searching, you know, asking, can we test this? Then I find out, you know, that there is no interest. My healthcare provider is not interested in chasing this and so if nobody will look, we don't have that information. So um, this is a battle that I personally, as a, as a lactation clinician, fight. So um, that's why I am especially passionate about it. Well, that's awesome. I truly appreciate um, you know, your work. And I know that you're very dedicated to, to this area of work. Um, and I'm, I'm very interested in hearing more and your, your full presentation. So can you tell me just briefly um, about the research that you've looked at? How do you think it will support healthcare, healthcare professionals? What I'm really hoping to do is pull together information from the most disparate corners of the earth, it seems like. But they're <laughs> asking me, show me the evidence. You know, why should I do this? Where is the evidence? And so my hope is that I'm going to be able to pull at least a few pieces together that are going to convince them that this is worth taking a second look at when it comes to um, mysterious low milk supply situations. Well, that's certainly very exciting. I'm looking forward to uh, definitely seeing more of that too. It just feels like every time you mention prolactin to your healthcare provider, they, you know, they're they're not really agreeable. You know, there just doesn't seem to be um, enough con sort of consistency with the information that we have to provide with them. So I'm truly looking forward to hearing your presentation, and I know that you're very passionate in this area. So um, it will be great to hear the full presentation. But for now, uh, we've run out of time. So thanks for being with me here today, and for all of our delegates listening, um, don't forget to come and listen to uh, Lisa Rasko. She's going to be talking about get a better grip on prolactin.